Sentry turrets provide an excellent passive damage and or supportive backbone to any party composition and offer a wide ranging array of options to decimate terminids and automatons effectively. With that in mind, here's a tier list that solely focuses on sentries and how they rank against each other. As always, quick disclaimer here folks, this is my opinion based on my own experience with Helldivers 2. I am definitely not claiming any of my views here are the be all and end all of the game. Like all tier lists, I'm sure there will be some varied opinions out there so as always let me know what your thoughts and opinions are by sounding off in the comments below let's kick things off with the mortar still holding its place as one of the most formidable options available this turret remains unparalleled in its ability to obliterate hordes of enemies upon deployment it unleashes volleys of three mortar shots raining destruction upon enemy positions with not so much pinpoint accuracy but we'll come to that in a moment whether facing waves of automatons entrenched in fortified bases or swarms of terminids nesting in various environments this powerhouse effortlessly dispatches lesser armored foes with its potent splash damage consistently racking up impressive kill counts however it's crucial to underscore a significant caveat success with this turret hinges on coordinated team play unfortunately this requirement can present challenges particularly in ad hoc player groups effective utilization demands adaptability from all team members as failure to synchronize play styles can quickly deplete reinforcement reserves unlike human players the turret lacks discernment indiscriminately targeting any nearby enemy even those threatening teammates careless positioning can result in unintended bombardment emphasizing the need to either remain close to the turret or adopt strategies that ensure enemies remain at a safe distance hence my comment previously about the questionable pinpoint accuracy venturing recklessly into nests or bases while the turret is active invites certain and peril. Furthermore, it's worth noting that the turret presence may inadvertently provoke nearby patrols, complicating stealth orientated endeavours, especially on higher difficulty settings. Despite these drawbacks, the mortar remains an indispensable asset, offering unparalleled support when wielded by a cohesive squad willing to accommodate its operational constraints. With that being said, I am really on the fence between placing this as either S or A tier. I think that it can really hinge on what difficulty you play here folks whilst it pains me i'm going to go with a tier because i think once you start playing on eight and nine this century can get you into more trouble than in lower difficulties as it has that annoying habit of pulling patrols which you are going to want to be avoiding when you play at higher difficulties so i would say in higher difficulties it's a tier and that's what we're focusing on here but if you're playing in lower difficulties definitely s tier a tricky choice but i'll stand with the a tier one here folks now onto the machine gun turrets the basic machine turret often serves as a starting point for many players delving into sentry deployment. While it may not typically be the go-to choice beyond its initial acquisition, and more on that in a moment folks, it does serve as a valuable tool for acquainting yourself with sentry mechanics. Effective at hall clearing and eliminating unarmored targets, its utility is somewhat constrained in other aspects, but that's not too bad because when integrated into a comprehensive sentry setup, it can complement heavier turrets such as the auto cannon or the rocket turret aiding in thinning the crowd to allow the heavier turrets to focus on the more formidable adversaries if we then take a look at its larger counterpart the gatling sentry this one absolutely reigns supreme in horde clearing capabilities boasting of an unmatched fire rate that swiftly dispatches non-armored foes yet it does have one slight caveat and i've mentioned this in previous videos the gatling turret chews through ammunition and this can be a bit of a hindrance when you're in a large fight you will burn through the the ammunition very quickly and your turret will stop working effectively so you need to think about that and this could be a massive pain in the heat of battle because you don't have anything to put down so the basic machine turret actually offers a more sustained damage output over time so this is actually quite a nice selling point both excel when strategically positioned at elevated points and in key choke points however like the other turrets they are very volatile in terms of their targeting choices so this can pose a threat to teams Mates, which underscores the need for clear communication to avoid friendly fire incidents with that in mind i'm going to place the machine turret at b tier as when i reflect on this i do think there are better choices overall for a stratagem slot for the same job and i think even more so is the case when considering the sentries in isolation whilst the gatling sentry does rip through ammo incredibly fast i'm going to place this one at a higher rank at a tier what are your perspectives on these insights folks share your thoughts in the comments below the auto 
cannon. What a marvel. Functioning much like its manual counterpart, but with the added convenience of automatic reloading, which is an absolute godsend on the battlefield. Its prowess lies in its ability to efficiently dispatch armoured adversaries from bile titans to chargers and even those pesky armoured trash mobs and stalkers. Against automatons, this is where it truly shines, making quick work of their mechanical armoured columns and defences. However, it's important to acknowledge its limitations. Despite its raw power, the auto cannon lacks discernment in target selection. You're probably noticing a bit of a theme emerging here, folks, as we talk through these sentries. It often fails to prioritise the right threats at the right time. So to mitigate this, coordination with the squad is essential. Focus on clearing smaller foes around larger targets to limit the turret's options. It's wise not to solely rely on its own judgement, as human intervention here proves much more reliable in the critical situations you find yourself in. Furthermore, it has an absolutely terrible turning speed. And this, even with the upgrades from the ship modules, adds another layer of consideration when you're thinking about choosing sentries for deployment. This is actually one of the most frustrating things about this turret, and you do need to keep an eye on it and compensate and adapt accordingly as a squad. You might find that it is not going to shoot the targets that you want, so you might need to take matters into your own hands there, folks. Despite these drawbacks, though, I do think the auto cannon remains a dependable deployment in any squad willing to play around its idiosyncrasies for the greater good of a mission. For this reason, I am going to place this at S tier. I think it's far too effective to ignore, especially at higher difficulties when you find yourself in those pinch moments with lots of larger, heavily armoured foes on the field. If you learn how to play around this turret, it can absolutely change the tides of battle. Keep being a helpful team player. What would really help me would be if you could smash that subscribe button to support the channel. It really helps me out. I'm loving the positivity and the encouragement in the comments, and I'm so glad these videos are helping you make decisions and make the most of your time with the game. Thank you. The Rocket Sentry stands out as a versatile option here, folks, as well. Adept at handling most armoured adversaries and swarms of lesser foes with its powerful splash damage, its folly of two rockets at a time ensures swift elimination of targets, effectively racking up kills whilst maintaining battlefield control. However, it has a back blast which poses a risk to unwary teammates capable of knocking them back or even incapacitating them if you stray too close. So whilst that may not be personal, it's certainly something to keep in mind during engagements and it can actually sometimes not be avoided and cause some absolutely horrendous outcomes on the field. When considering turret options, the choice often boils down to choosing between the auto cannon and the rocket sentry. So with both being capable of handling a variety of armoured threats, there is a compelling argument for both the rocket sentry and the auto cannon to be used in any squad composition. But if I was going to have to choose between them, I would probably say that my preference lies slightly in favour of the auto cannon. So for that reason, I am going to put the rocket sentry one tier below at A tier. And I know from my previous tier list video that a lot of people disagreed with me putting rocket pods so low down. And I have actually since tried to use rocket pods in automaton missions and I do just find them really inconsistent. So I don't know what you think about my choices here, folks. But as always, I am totally open to hearing your opinions. Sound off in the comments below. Moving on to the EMS Mortar. This serves as an invaluable support tool akin to its orbital counterpart. With exceptional crowd control and area of effect potential, it excels at immobilizing large targets and halting advancing hordes, effectively dictating the flow of battle, which is something that becomes increasingly more useful the higher up the difficulties you go. It synergizes brilliantly with fire-based outputs such as Napalm Strike, Incendiary grenades, flamethrowers, all that kind of stuff, providing a potent combination for clearing out entrenched enemies and advancing waves. Notably, its ability to target multiple foes over a wide radius makes it ideal for preemptive engagements or locking down strategic areas. However, like its counterpart again, caution is definitely warranted to prevent it from webbing and trapping teammates or leaving them vulnerable to enemy onslaughts. Its issues once again, like the mortar, lie in its unpredictable behaviour in high difficulties. It can cause more trouble than it's worth because it will just decide to shoot at patrols that are quite a way off in the distance that could otherwise have been avoided. So again, for that reason, I'm going to move away from putting this in S tier and put it down in A tier. I know that a lot of people despise turret gameplay generally, particularly the mortars. So I'm taking this into consideration a little bit as well, folks. As for the Tesla coil, while its potential to cover choke points and excel in bug breach handling and swarm missions is undeniable, it does come with, in my opinion, some significant drawbacks. It has a tendency to inadvertently cause 
team kills due to the way the electricity arc between enemy and player and this means you need to be very careful in terms of your placement and ensure coordination is absolutely paramount to avoid these incidents i have seen this turret used really effectively in squads particularly when everybody is in good comms and really being mindful but the more chaotic a situation gets the more dangerous this turret becomes and again as we go through the difficulties i just find this turret to just not really hit the mark of what we're looking for here for a higher tier choice so i was going to place this straight into c tier but the more i've thought about it i'd consider this to actually be incredibly useful in some situational circumstances so with that being said i'm actually going to give this its own category called situationally viable and i know there's a lot of tesla fans out there so for those who have more experience of using the tesla coil or any insights perhaps into other century style call-ins your input is invaluable feel free to share your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below if you want a more in-depth dive into sentries and their nuances check out this next video it's got you covered take care of yourselves keep having fun and i'll see you in the next one